And uh, let's go to our next caller now. Con, you're on the air. Good morning, Neil. How are you? I recognize that voice. The voice of a renowned Newfoundland and Labrador songster. Well, thank you very much. It's getting, it's getting a little bit older as we get, but they say it gets better with age. Oh, absolutely. Go ahead, Con. I've, I've been using that voice for other things uh, in the last few months. I don't know if you've been listening or not, but uh, I've been calling you this morning. I was, took, I was quite interested with your first caller and talking about things going on with uh, our, our situation financially I, in the province. I have been following you, Con. I've been out of the province for a number of weeks, but I have been following you. And congratulations on jumping in to the public sphere with your opinion on matters well i really appreciate that bill it's a tough battle sometimes but yeah. uh, you know uh, my my position on the whole thing over the over the course of it has been the actual cost of muskrat falls yeah um the people of newfoundland of course everybody knows that the way that the the, the financing is going to go for muskrat falls is the ratepayers in newfoundland and labrador are, are essentially going to be on the hook to pay for the for the building of the project mm-hmm. and, and that bill is a, is a lot of money at the end of the day and we don't know what that final cost is going to be uh, you know overruns in these industrial projects go high and above what what the actual estimated costs are as we all know yeah. and uh, we we find ourselves in a position where uh, you know people are wondering about uh, the fiscal situation and where we are now Con, just correct uh, just to uh, bring me up to scratch on this question uh, are you against the the, the uh, lower churchill development in principle or are, are the way in which it's being conducted the lack of transparency what's your stand on that well, mo- mostly for me, it's the cost of a bill and the transparency. I mean, that's government's been completely out of control, and democracy's been taken completely out of this process. But I mean, that's right. aside from that's aside from the issue. What, what I'm really calling about this morning is something that's even paramount to what we're talking about. Yeah, and that's that's information that's come out from Cabot Martin uh, uh, early this weekend. Cabot uh, has been working on a, on a on a document that he's put together, a report that he's put together on an aspect of it, mm-hmm. and, and an aspect that's known as the North Spur. I don't know if you've ever heard about it or not. Have yeah, but vaguely, vaguely, yeah. Well, for those of you people who don't know what the North Spur is, the North Spur is a is a physical asset of the dam dam uh, system. There, it's it's a natural uh, containment part of the dam structure. Yeah, the dam the, the, the project itself consists of two dams, uh, the generating station and spillway, and the North Spur as a physical asset that uh, that needs to be uh, to you it can be utilized if it's if it's able to contain the water and can be maintained. Right, and. Uh, throughout the whole process of, of the years and years, even going to, you know before Nelcor and, and uh, this present development, over the over the period of time that other people have looked at this, there has come a big issue with the North Spur has come up and come to light. Mm-hmm. What's that? In, in that the North Spur, which which of course is a little peninsula that juts out to the river, is composed of, of material that's called marine glacial clay. Okay. That better known in the, in, in in that world as quick clay. Yeah. And this is a phenomenon that occurs throughout, uh, I guess, the, the Arctic region of the world, throughout the throughout the different parts of of, of the world. Yeah. Norway has it. We we have it throughout Canada. We've had, you know, there's many incidences of landslides and and the situations well, along the Churchill River. When we were kids growing up, we'd see this. What you're describing, I think we used to call it pug. It was. Oh, uh, so I've, uh, my, my uncle Jerry called it pug clay the other day. Exactly was, uh, right. We used to call it pug, and you could mold, you could mold it, and it was very slippery and slo- You know, you could cause a landslide as a bunch of kids just fooling around a bank where it exists. That's right. This this stuff this stuff uh, is 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 material that uh, contains eighty percent water, Bill, and, yeah. and uh, unfortunately, this situation has been well known and documented, and uh, you know, all the proponents of different of different. Uh, Different projects that have been posed over the years have been well aware of uh, of the of the situation at the North Spur and its instability. Yeah, there, there has been no fix for this phenomenon called the North Spur. But sure, surely uh, we we can't get into too much technical detail, Tom. But surely the wit of mankind is able. You know, engineering can overcome that problem of uh, uh, of pug or or whatever. You know, that kind of slippery clay, can't it? Well, one would hope, Bill, that one would hope, but now that we've sanctioned this project, that there is a fix for it. But unfortunately, they have not, uh, they have not come up, come forward with the fix. And we're dealing with a situation where the, the, the costing of the project has been done, uh, with, you know, with the, the consideration for the North Spurs being used as a natural asset. Okay, just let me make sure I understand here. Are you saying that 
the North Spur, is, uh, what it consists of is coming as a surprise to people, or has it been known all along? Not at all. No, it's completely not a surprise. I mean, Alcor will admit to you to rent in two seconds that they know that they've, so been, surely, they've, they've been made aware of this for many, many years. So surely it has been taken into consideration for many, many years. Has it not? Oh, oh, oh and certainly, and, 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 and measures have been, have been, been uh, utilized back in the 80s, long before this particular project. Right. There's, you know, there's, there's a pumping system installed on the North Spur yeah. uh, to get down to, to get to get to the brass taxes. But Bill, here's the situation. We've gone forward and sanctioned a project not knowing if this thing is going to have to have further engineering and design on it. Okay. They have just they have just put forward a, a, a listing, a public listing for offering up for a job for the engineer to look after the stability of the North Spur. Mm. If if it's a case where, you know, they can't they cannot use it as a a natural asset, and that was their plan along all along since 1999. They've been, they've been anybody who's ever been thinking about using the Lower Churchill has had to use the North Spur in, okay. in, their, in their in their in their situation. Okay. In our situation now, we've sanctioned and gone forward without an engineering fix, which means if this thing is not stable enough on its own, there's going to have to be an engineered solution. Okay. Which would which would require a lot more cement, a lot more engineering, and guess what? A lot more money. Overruns. Money overruns. Money. You can almost no, predict no, the overruns. This is, this is beyond an overrun. This yeah. is even beyond an overrun. This is a, this is a, an engineering overlook. Yeah. Much most like the situation we found ourselves going from DG two to DG three, where they had to re, they had a reorientation of the of the powerhouse on the river or the dam mm -hmm. on the river. Okay. You know, we find ourselves we find ourselves where these people are you know either not prepared or they are about to put us in a situation where they're they're hoping to get us at the point of no return. Okay, now Con, uh, I'm getting the word. Who, who knew about it is what I want to know. Uh, well, it's a well, a good question you're asking, and when you, a man of your uh, uh, in intelligence and knowledge and Cabot Martins and others who have jumped in on this, when you raise these kinds of questions, uh, people, ha reasonable people have no choice but to sit up and listen and wonder about it. So thank you very much for raising it. Now, I've got a control is telling me to take a break. I've got to say goodbye for now. One more little thing there. Just Fire just, away. For, for, for anybody who wants to have a look at Cabot's report, go to, go to, the, go to the web. It's muspretinfo.ca. Okay. It's, okay. it's a wonderful piece of work, and every Newfoundlander and Labradorian should look at it because it has huge implications for the overall cost of, of Muskrat Falls. Con, thank you for telling us about that site, and uh, I suppose if you want to Google Muskrat Falls, you'll get it as well. If you don't well, know Muskrat Falls, you'll you get it, no problem. Okay, thanks, Con. Keep it up, and uh, we'll uh, welcome calls from any Anybody on all aspects of that most important project. Thanks a lot. Sir. Appreciate the time, Bill, and welcome back. Anytime. Thank you, Con. All the best. Bye-bye.